Well, what, what we have here is a, uh, this is a typical 10 barrel brewery and it's also a typical ale brewery. The, the difference between an ale brewery and a lager brewery uh, is that in a mash tun where you put the barley in and cook it, if you're doing a traditional style lager, you need to put the barley in at water that's one temperature and then slowly raise the temperature. In other words, the, you have to have the ability to change the heat inside this. In an ale brewery, you just dump it in and it's one temperature and that's, uh, and you hope for the best. You can't control it once you dump it in. So what happens here is that we put our water in and it's heated up to, uh, we usually start at around 170 and then we dump our, our barley in and the barley will sit in here. Now the barley has been uh, malted and malting is a simple process. Uh, another word for malting is sprouting. The, the barley has been sprouted and it's, if you've ever grown bean sprouts, it's the same thing. You moisten a seed and it starts to germinate, a little rootlet forms. And what the seed is trying to do is it is making enzymes that will convert its little power package that's inside of each seed, which is starch. And so it starts making enzymes that will convert that starch into sugar. Well, what the malter does is he starts the process of the sprouting, but then stops it by drying the grain. So that's what I get. I get barley that has been sprouted or malted. So what it has, it's got husk, it's got starch, and then it's got the enzymes that will convert the starch into malt sugar. When you dump the barley into water at different temperatures, different things can happen. You can make different kinds of sugars at different temperatures. Some ferment readily, some don't. In the ale breweries, you tend to want to wind up with a, a mixture, and it's called wort at this point. Once the conversion starts and you start making the malt sugar, uh, then it's, it's called wort. And an ale, a typical ale wort is, is going to wind up having a little malty character at the end as opposed to a typical lager wort uh, which is going to be drier at the end of fermentation. And that's why the lagers are drier and crisper and ales tend to be a little bit more fruity and malty. This process takes about an hour for the conversion to be complete. Um, at that point I start to drain the wort out of the mash tun and it goes, these are screens that are, that are up off the bottom and the screens will hold back the husk of the barley and, but the, the uh, wort, the sweet wort will be able to slide through the screen, goes into the grant and then gets pumped from the grant into the brew kettle. So in the brew kettle, this is where my heat source is. Uh, this particular kettle is a gas-fired kettle. You can also have a steam-fired kettle, and the, the bigger ones normally are steam. And you can also have a uh, electric. Electric is uh, more expensive, but for some applications, it's the way to go. Once the wort comes to a boil, then you want to add your hops. These are hops. Hops is used for a variety of reasons in beer. The obvious thing that hops do is add a certain bitter quality to the beer. You need to have a, a certain amount of bitterness to balance the certain amount of malt uh, quality of the beer that's, that's after fermentation. If you don't have enough bitterness in there, then the malt appears to be sweet. If you have too much bitterness, then the, then the beer tends to be um, astringent or, or uh, too bitter, too hoppy. But when you have the right balance, then, then it's a very pleasing drink. You know, the, the whole point is that when you take a drink, um, you want to have another drink. That, that's, that's the sign of a good drinking beer. And you tend to use different hops for different times. Uh, at first, you use a high bittering hop at the beginning, and then as the later additions happen, you use hops that aren't as bitter but are more aromatic and more flavorful. When you say more, that, that, that means for the style that you're trying to produce because if you're trying to produce a certain style that that's not a part of it. For example, our Russian Imperial Stout, that's not about the hops. It's about the, the blend of the malts. 
whereas the, the IPAs, it's about the hops. So you add different hops at different points. The boil continues uh, for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on what you're doing. And then, uh, then you shut it off. The wort rests for uh, about 10 minutes just to cool off a little bit. Then you transfer the wort out of the kettle through a small uh, heat exchanger, which will cool the wort down. And then it can go over into one of these tanks. And these are our fermenters. We have seven fermenters now. When we opened up originally, we had four in 92. And the business took off so well that we needed to add three more. So we had to cut a hole in the floor and lower three more fermenters down into the basement. So we have a total of seven fermenters. The amount of time that beer takes to ferment, first of all, depends on what kind of beer you're making, ales or lagers. Lagers tend to take a little longer. It's a different yeast that likes to ferment colder and slower. Ales use a, a different yeast and they tend to like to ferment cooler, uh, but not cold. And they normally are ready in, in about a month is a nice time for our beers to be able to sit. Some of the stronger beers, uh, stronger in alcohol, stronger in dark malt or, or hop levels, they like to sit a little longer than that. Barley wines like to be a couple months. So after four, six, eight weeks, depending on, again, as I said, the, uh, the style of beer, then we decide if it's going to be filtered or not. At that point, the beer then goes this direction. These are our serving tanks. These tanks go directly to the taps. The beer is pushed with nitrogen, which is very uh, inert to the beer. It doesn't make it uh, uh, foam. After the tank gets to be at a low level where there might be just uh, one or two kegs worth of beer left, then we will take that beer and put it into kegs so that we can put a new batch of beer in the serving tanks.